I never needed a doctor or anyone to tell me that Lux had ADHD. Hello guys, welcome landing crew to today's video. Now, usually when I do these educational sit down videos, it's all about autism because autism is a really big part of our life. However, today's video is about ADHD and ironically, ADHD is an even bigger part of my life. So today's video is mainly gonna be around my four year old son, Alexander, we call him Lex. Um, he's been diagnosed with autism and he's also been diagnosed with ADHD combined type. We're gonna go over not only a little bit of his story. We're going to talk about the signs of ADHD in a young child, a child that is under the age of five. Then at the end, I'm going to answer all of the questions that you guys have asked. ADHD is a new topic that I don't talk about a lot. ADHD affects Noah and Lex more than autism does. Um, a lot of the behaviors, a lot of the struggles we have actually has little to do with autism and more to do with impulse control and emotion regulation and all of that. So we are going to talk about all of that in today's video. Now, why is ADHD such a big part of my life? It is because Lonnie and myself, Lonnie's my husband for new people, we both have ADHD. We were diagnosed with it as kids and we definitely still have it as adults. If you are a part of our live streaming family on you now, you know this because it is literally like, be flower, I'm like all over the place and I can't keep straight. So ADHD and autism can get a little bit confusing, especially when you're dealing with a young child that may not show the classic signs. And that was always the story for our 12 year old Noah and Lex. At a young younger age, their hyperactivity and their problem behaviors made them seem more, more like an ADHD child versus an autistic kid. Just know that it can present differently in every child. A child can have ADHD and not have autism. A child can have autism and not have ADHD. And a child can have autism and ADHD. Autism and ADHD are just those disorders that really overlap. And when they're really young, sometimes it's kind of hard to see it apart. I know we get this question a lot. How do we know that Lux just is an ADHD. That's very possible, kind of doubtful because he's definitely showing some specific autistic behaviors, but we are getting him reevaluated uh, closer to his fifth birthday. So Lonnie and myself both have ADHD. Our four older kids all have ADHD. Our two younger kids, we do not know because they're one and two. I don't think Liam has ADHD, but only time can tell. Lux got diagnosed a couple months before his fourth birthday. Basically with Lux, I didn't notice anything really abnormal till after 18 months. These aren't about autism signs. This is strictly about ADHD. If you wanna watch his autism signs video, I have one of those, but some of these are gonna overlap with autism because as I said, they do. Once he reached about 18, 19 months old, he was just going and going and going. But even before that, he was climbing out of his crib at 11 months old. But by the time he was 18 months old, he was climbing bunk beds. He was always going. You couldn't use those 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 gates that you use to keep the kids safe while they play a little bit while you go make dinner or something. That wasn't a thing with Lex. Lex has had to have constant supervision since age two. When we lived with my mother-in-law for a couple months, constant because she didn't have a lock on her door, so he would just dart out. He wouldn't like sit down and play even shows unless he was sitting in the high chair watching a show he would not sit and watch a show like he would just after a minute or two he just wander off it's hard to get him to really focus on one thing but if you find something he really likes like puzzles or problem solving or roblox <laughs> something like that he'll like hyper focus on it i never needed a doctor or anyone to tell me that lex had adhd i always knew he had it it was just one of those things some of these things are just typical toddler things like sometimes you just have a hyperactive toddler but when you're dealing with ADHD it's a little bit over the top it's just different Lex is literally like the energizer bunny he is just going 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 the couple times that he's been on stream when I'm downstairs people have asked me if he was having a hyper day and that was literally just him every single day <laughs> I think it's hard to explain his level of hyperactivity until you've seen it with your own eyes he really doesn't have a thought process to stop and think before he does something. So it's very impulsive behavior, but a little bit older as he got, again, he we could get him to sit down for a little bit longer. We noticed if we got puzzles for him or if we did drawing with him or we did something he was really interested in, that could maybe keep his attention for like five, 10 minutes. It's one of the reasons why we have so many different like building things. He will only do one task 
for five, 10 minutes at most. And then he wants to move on to something else. It's just constantly feeling like you have to entertain this kid because if you don't, then he finds his own things he wants to do. And usually it's destructive. So I will kind of go over more things as I go over the signs as some things I'm sure I'm missing because ADHD is kind of second nature to me. Like it's what I'm used to. Like one of my best friends, Melissa, she's ADHD as well. So we kind of think alike. So a lot of the people in my life are ADHD. So we're all just kind kind of used to it. And it's so funny because I had a friend that had a little girl and we went to the grocery store. This little girl was two, like only two. And I remember just being amazed watching this little two-year-old just walk along the street with her mom, but she wasn't holding her hand. And I was thinking, how is this even possible? Like I, I could never do this with one of my kids. They'd be like running off or something like that. If that's what you're used to, that's what you're used to. But once you, you've had an ADHD child, you know. Okay, so I'm going to give you signs of ADHD in early childhood. So this one is the main thing, like I talked about, it's really hard for them to concentrate on one show, one activity, but on the flip side, they could also kind of hyper-focus or kind of obsess about something as well. Always moving, pacing, fidgeting, can't sit still. Maybe they talk with their hands a lot. <laughs> Reading these guys, I was like, oh my God, I'm so ADHD. <laughs> they might have a hard time even like sitting down and reading a book to them. Lex doesn't have a really hard time with the books. He seems to do pretty good with that. Um, so another thing is issues with taking turns. If they're a little bit older and they're not speech delayed, they might like interrupt a lot or talk over people. I have that problem so bad. They might cut in line, grab toys. They don't want to take turns. Just a lot of impatience. It looks like a very impatient child. They might talk a lot <laughs> or or make noises. So if they aren't talking, they're making noises of some sort. Makes a lot of careless mistakes. Of course, the biggest one is hyperactivity, but it's kind of like more than hyperactivity. It's kind of like you've given your child like a, a, a can of icing every morning before getting started. I did get that question a lot if we let Lex have sugar. And no, Lex is the one child that reacts the worst to sugar. It's been like that for a while. With the recent issues, we've just had to make some really hard changes with him. And one of those was definitely sugar intake. I'm not gonna say there aren't ever a time like he's snuck a sip of soda or something, but we don't let him have those drinks. We don't let him have juice. He has milk. He has flavored water or water. We try to limit it a lot. We used to get him those Kinder eggs. He just has always just had a bad reaction, especially to chocolate. I don't know if chocolate just has a lot of sugar in it or what, but he's always just had a um, extreme reaction. So back to the hyperactivity, <laughs> like think the Energizer Bunny. And just like with my autism signs, just because your child does a few of these things, it doesn't mean they have ADHD. Just because they might not do a few of these things doesn't mean they don't. Like Danielle, for example, she didn't have a lot of these. Like I don't remember her having extreme hyperactivity. They don't finish one activity before moving on to the next. So so Lex might start building a castle of blocks and before he's even got like the first layer down, he wants to move on to something else. And then he also has emotion regulation issues. That's another big thing if they get really upset over really small things, outbursts, meltdowns, tantrums, like excessive tantrums. Lex doesn't really have like meltdowns or anything, but if he has to wait for something, if he has to wait his turn, if he has to wait for X, Y, Z, he just gets so upset about it. When wanting to play, instead of going up to another child their age and saying, hey, wanna play, they just go up and start playing with them without really asking if they want to or permission or anything like that. They might not necessarily have that fear factor or any stranger danger. I know this is gonna be a question that is gonna be on here, but what is the difference between autism and ADHD? With autism, um, you usually have more stuff added. Lack of eye contact engagement, lack of like receptive skills, a lot of times speech delay or no speech. And you might have a lot of sensory issues, stimming. Stimming's a big like specific to autism kind of thing. And also with autism, you have changes with routine and then obsessive interest. So those are kind of what makes it a little bit different. The biggest thing with from autism to ADHD, in my opinion, is the communication barrier, the sensory issues, and then the stimming. So we're gonna get on to the questions. There were a lot of great questions, a lot of ones that I'm really excited to kind of address. I feel like these videos just aren't done a lot. So this first question is from Tiff Tiff, how to regulate their behavior without medications? It's not really a question for me, but maybe others. When my son was diagnosed at four years old, that's the first thing they said is he needs Ritalin or Adderall. 
Obviously, I refuse, and he's now 13 and has never had meds. Don't get me wrong, sometimes you do need it, but I strongly believe no four-year-old needs the medications they tried to put my son on. So this is where I'm going to try not to get controversial, because I know medication is like a hot topic, but I was on Ritalin as a child. I hated it. It was miserable. It made me sick to my stomach. It made me like a zombie. I did not like it. And I was on it for a couple years until I finally kept begging my mom to take me off of it. And she agreed to. I'm not going to say what other people should do with their four-year-old, but we will not be putting Lex on medication. Not until he's at least six. And that's only if it's affecting his quality of life or his education. Those are two big things for us that we're like, yeah, let's step in. If he's just struggling and just needs some redirection, even if it's constantly, <laughs> we want to do that because I do believe that their brains are still developing so, so much. It's one of the regrets I have with Noah. So that's just kind, kind of my opinion. If you do something different or you feel something different, that's completely fine. That That's just for, for me. So Tiff, I, I do agree with you, girl. Some great ways to regulate their behavior without medication is to just be careful what they're watching. Just the general things that we don't want to do that are hard to do. Make sure that they're not watching anything violent, anything that could get them worked up. Let them run out and play exercise. I can tell you once we started to take Lex out every single day, even if it was just around the block real quick, that helped a lot and we saw an improvement right away, like literally that day. So I definitely think that exercise size is a big thing. Let them get that energy out. I think it's important also what they're they're consuming as well. I know that sounds funny coming from someone who has the grocery hauls I have, but I do feel that diet does play a role into it. If you are loading up your child on a bunch of artificial dyes, processed sugar, obviously you're, you're going to have some issues. Every child is different. Some children can have all of those things and it not really be effect to them, to their behavior. Others, it affects them majorly. I think Lex is one of those that really, really affects. So I think diet's a great one. Finding out what works for your child. I'm back, pitches. <laughs> Sorry, that that wasn't YouTube appropriate. It's it's pitches with a P. How can you decipher between just a normal four-year-old behavior versus the possibilities of ADHD? We thought my child had it, but now the doctor thinks it's just behavioral since it doesn't happen at school too. Again, ADHD is such a spectrum. For Lex, it was easy for us because he was on definitely the more severe side of ADHD. But for like Danielle, we didn't know till she was five, six, seven, right? So it, it can take a little bit longer for it to show up. ADHD can manifest itself in so many different ways ways. I don't necessarily believe just because they're not showing those behaviors at school that that means it's all behavioral and it's not ADHD. For me to really get my opinion on this, I guess I would have to know what it behaviors exactly. Is it just hyperactivity? Is it impulsivity? Is it aggression? Like exactly what's going on? My opinion is you know your child best. Go hang out with a bunch of four-year-olds and kind of like observe and see. Tony said, so I know ADHD can be a spectrum in itself. How is Lex affected by it? And what are your next steps to helping him. I feel like Lex's life is kind of ruled by ADHD right now from his sleep issues to his aggression, just everything. It's it's causing the most issues. He's definitely being affected by it. What we're doing to help him next is definitely get him on some type of medication, something to help him sleep. Sleeping is so important. It doesn't matter what you have going on, what label you have, what you think they have. Sleeping is crucial. That is our number one step. Um, our number two step is to kind of make sure that he's getting all the positive attention he needs. I think some social settings, some therapies will definitely help him. I know that there's going to be some parent training in there too. I know that there's probably things that Lonnie and I are doing wrong. That's why I love in-home therapies because for OT, I'll be able to see how she's helping him and how we can help him when she's gone. Also giving him the outlets he needs. Like if he needs a sensory break, if he needs to take a time out into the sensory swing and swing, or he needs to go play with something, then that's what we do. We, we've done a lot that accommodates to let we've removed the superheroes, we've removed the sugar, we've given him more exercise. So I think just listening to what your child is telling you without them telling you. So Paige McClure asked, does ADHD affect the learning process? It definitely can. I had the hardest time learning in school. Danielle had the hardest time. Danielle was on medication for ADHD until sixth grade. It can definitely hinder the learning process, whether you have issues concentrating and or 
hyperactivity. If you're bouncing around and not sitting down in your chair and doing your work, you're obviously not learning. But if you can't concentrate either, you can't learn either. Just for other people who might be watching this who doesn't have ADHD and doesn't really understand it is I would be like in middle school and we would be reading history. We're supposed to read a chapter or something. And I would have to read the same page like six times to let it like absorb in my head because by the second sentence I was thinking about what I was going to do after school. It's like you're in this room with all of these thoughts and you're trying to concentrate on this one thing but you just can't. I feel like school's hard because again you're trying to concentrate on that. If you start thinking about oh instead of learning about George Washington oh yeah I had that sleepover this weekend that's going to be tons of fun. I mean everyone wants to think about that instead of school so it, it definitely does hinder the learning process. Habibatala Rab. <laughs> said my kid was diagnosed with ADHD on top of autism. My kid is hyper, just nonstop movement. Understand. I tried medication and I just don't see any effects. What do you do for hyperactivity? Also, my kid doesn't sleep. Every medication is different for every child. Um, some work, some doesn't. Sometimes you need a higher dose. So I would definitely talk to the doctor about that one. Um, as far as what we do for hyperactivity, again, just giving them an outlet is so, so important. That's why we have that entire front room just full of like the slide and the swing, just all of that, because I want them to be able to have that time to just play and get that energy out. I'm not saying that you're trying child isn't going to be hyper because you're giving them that outlet. They're still going to be hyper. It just kind of takes the edge off where it's not so impulsive, where they can kind of slow down a little bit physically and mentally. Pooja Joshi asks, hey, super mom, how do you manage aggressive behavior, especially when they hurt themselves? Lex does not hurt himself, thankfully, but he does hurt other people. When he does that, he is removed from the situation and put in time out. There are some behaviors that I feel like is beyond Lex's control. And I think it's our job as a parent, like when we realize he's being really impulsive and aggressive and hyper, obviously I don't want to like put him in a room with my little babies. That doesn't make sense because he's going to end up hurting them right but I could have just avoided it all along when we notice he's being aggressive to me that's him telling me something either he needs attention from us or he needs to go outside and burn off that energy or he's bored I think it's important to listen to what your kids saying whether they're saying it verbally or non-verbally so Yossi me said my now 11 year old was actually three years old when his preschool teacher brought it up to me he's currently on Adderall only on days he has school I never give on weekends we were the same with Danielle Danielle wouldn't get it during breaks or summer or weekends or anything like that she only took it on school days because it was to help her with her schoolwork. Danielle was on a milder medicine. I like Vyvanse the best. It wasn't something I felt like was super addictive. Every child reacts differently to different meds, different doses of meds, and you just have to do what's best for you. Um, Azara Cruz asked, what's the earliest kids can get diagnosed? My son will be turning four soon and we've seen signs since he was two and a half to three, but brought it up to pediatricians and got no answers. Um, usually pediatricians aren't going to touch it until they're older, until they can have like the teacher fill out a form as well. For us, we again knew around two and a half as well, but um, we had the psychologist evaluating him. I didn't even ask her to like evaluate him for ADHD or anything, but she was pretty certain about that. <laughs> Sonda Marshall said, how do you know when a behavior is the autism or the ADHD or just four-year-old behavior? Sonda, that is so hard, girl, isn't it? It's so hard to know, is he being an autistic four-year-old or is he being a hyperactive four-year-old or is he being an autistic hyperactive four-year-old. <laughs> Sometimes I think we we wonder too much and we think too much into it. Like, does it matter? Like at the end of the day, does it matter where, where that behavior is exactly coming from? Let's treat the symptoms. Let's help them. Whether he is being aggressive because he needs some sensory or he's being aggressive because he has no impulse control that day. Regardless, let's try to figure out what we can do to help him kind of thing. Um, Ashley asks, is there any holistic medicine to help ADHD? I have heard of a few. We actually tried some on Danielle, but guys, like that was like 10 years ago. I don't even remember what it was, but it was something that was suggested to us. And I was like, okay, let's try it. It didn't help her. We tried everything with Danielle, like remove red dye, remove sugar. Electro Music said, I'd recommend CBD oil if you can. I took ADHD medication when I was younger, made me different. CBD oil really helped me also with my mood. I'm not against CBD oil in any way. Um, it's just not something we're wanting to do with Lex quite yet. He's, he's still little. We aren't wanting to give him medicine during the day. We do have a doctor's appointment this week and it is 
for his sleeping. We definitely want to get him to sleep because I think that would improve his behavior a lot. I.B. Nessie said, my brother has ADHD and was diagnosed very young and was put on medication, but medication didn't seem to help him. Is there a way to manage it without medication or could that make the condition worse? Also, is it hereditary? I think it's hereditary. <laughs> this is my opinion with medication. Sometimes when a child's mind is going and going or maybe they're physically going and going, it's hard for them to slow down and learn some coping skills. So I don't think medication should take the place of teaching our children coping skills, teaching them how to self-regulate. I think that those are important things to teach them, which would be near impossible for some kids without medication. We still have to teach them. ADHD meds will help with a lot but I still think there's a gap in that bridge that us as parents or caregivers are responsible for to help them with. And there are some meds that help and some don't. Um, I know Danielle was put on Concerta. They tried putting Danielle on Concerta and it was, it was a flop. So I think some meds just don't work for some kids and some do, and you just kind of have to find out what works best. Celltel said, how to mentally prepare ourselves for our children diagnosis. I don't know, like, is it upsetting to know you have ADHD? I feel like a lot of kids have ADHD. I think it's like autism. You don't make it a big deal to them. You have autism. You have ADHD. It's a part of who you are. Shannon Welsh said, I've been told that a four-year-old can't be diagnosed with ADHD so young, which I totally disagree with. I would love to know some tips on how to better help with them to day-to-day -day routines. Thank you so much. I think it's like autism. Like I get told all the time, oh, 18 months was way too young. My doctor won't diagnose till age six or something. So I think every doctor has a different age that they're comfortable with. And I think a lot of times it's because of the medication. Maybe a doctor is afraid to give a four-year-old an ADHD diagnosis because then they feel like they have to medicate that four-year-old. Katie Crumley Vlogs asked, how do you guys discipline when he gets out of control? He has the sweetest little voice. I love when you video him talking. <laughs> Thank you, Katie. So we discipline him by putting him in timeout, which is really hard. <laughs> putting an ADHD child in timeout is like torture to them, basically. We would put him in timeout in like the little area where the bikes are where we have like all the fence and stuff he would pretend that he was like on some power ranger quest so it was like not even time out for him so that didn't work and then we had to start doing it where he would have to put his nose in the corner and then he just couldn't stand there for whole four minutes because we do the one minute for each year he couldn't stand there for four minutes so then he would sit down i know some parents are like no you have to stand and you have to put your nose on the wall i'm not that parent he sits in a chair and he sits there for four minutes because that seems to be the most effective we just have to kind of stand there with him and make sure he doesn't get out i mean he's he's four like if he pushes down liam or he's being extra mean we do make him go to his room because i think he's old enough to understand that like that's not okay and you don't get to push on your little brother we don't do like corporal punishment or anything like that i don't feel like it's effective miss vega asked do you think that lexus autism and adhd will affect him during his teen years to young adult time or do you think after a while he'll just be a normal kid that might like to play videos or something I want to say this. Autism and ADHD, if you are truly autistic, if you truly have ADHD, follows you for the rest of your life. Yes, you can learn better coping skills and you can learn how to be your best self and struggle least and manage this or manage that, but you're always going to have it. I'm 33 years old and I still struggle with my ADHD. Sometimes I hyper focus or obsess over things, or sometimes I'm impulsive. The same thing with autism. It's just a part of Lex at this point. It will be with him for the rest of his life. Ashley DeBruin asked, is Lex hyperactive all the time? Or does he have moments of calm? Does sleeping count when he's sick? When his iron gets low from not eating correctly? <laughs> he's not a calm kid at all. By the only time he's calm is when he first wakes up or he's not feeling good. Thank you, Ashley. Ashley's in Australia. I hope you guys are staying safe. Please, please stay safe. It is heartbreaking what's happening in Australia right now. So you are my thoughts, girl. Brittany Martin asked, does Lex hyper focus on anything? Yes, he definitely does, but he has more of a like distractibility about him than hyper focusing. Haley Mars, was it obvious that he had ADHD? Mm -hmm. Haley said, my brother has ADHD, but it didn't come out the same way it does in most kids. But once he got the diagnosis, it made sense. It does make sense. And reading over the signs again, I was like, oh my God, I'm so ADHD, which I already knew. But sometimes we're so used to seeing a certain behavior in someone, or we're so used to a certain behavior in ourselves that we don't really realize that there's a name to it. And there's a reason why we react or act that 
that way. The Morales Familia asked, do you feel ABA will help some of Lex's ADH behaviors also? I feel like if we did choose to go the ABA route, they would be able to address the issues that we are having as well because it's it's a behavioral therapy. The Rupper family said, how do you deal with it? I know some people are overwhelmed with ADHD and think they're doing something wrong, help. And I think that's with anything. I think when something's going on with our kids, we feel like some, we're doing something wrong. I mean, I always feel like I'm doing something wrong every day, but I think it's important for us to know that um, as long as we're trying our best, as long as we are doing what we can to help our child and understand our child. I think a lot of it is about understanding each individual child because each individual child is different. I have four kids with with ADHD and they present all differently. They're on different severities. They have different issues. They have different ways that I can help them. So it's important for a parent to learn those ways to help your child. That is it. This is a really long video, but I hope it answered all of your questions. I will do one, not anytime soon. It'll be probably in the far future about um, signs of ADHD and older kids. And then we'll also do one in adults because again, ADHD is like our household. If I, I could put one diagnosis on our house, it's ADHD. <laughs> so thank you guys for watching. If you are new to our Laning Crew, we would love for you to be a part of our family. You guys are amazing. You are awesome. And you're going to see us tomorrow. Where you move, make me blind. You will always be there. There's no doubt in my mind. You will always be there. Heading out to see.